suggestions for possible clarifications. <coughs> So the presentation will cover the following points, uh, some of the important statements given by Srila Prabhupada, uh, understanding the importance of the two dimensions of dharma, we call swadharma, and then also understanding the context in which we as a society uh, are meant to actually introduce Varnasram, and uh, this we can understand in the presentation and explanation given by Srila Prabhupada many years ago uh, of the four movements of our society. This will help us to establish the difference between primary and secondary goals. And just a short uh, <clears throat> few comments regarding what is actually uh, a main issue, global issue right now in terms of <clears throat> urbanization versus uh, agrarian-based life. Uh, a few interesting uh, quotes in that respect. And then why this will lead us into education and why traditional education, not just education, but traditional education is so important. And we'll briefly mention about what we call Varnashram education, as well as the five pillars that make up uh, traditional education. 
There's also the four vidyas uh, that we find in traditional education. We'll just cover this briefly. <clears throat> and then number nine, cities. We should understand, we briefly mentioned this a few days back, uh, as preaching bases and what kind of curriculum we should devise in order to address those who are living in our cities. And then villages as our living basis, as opposed to preaching basis. Of course, in the villages there will also be preaching. And curriculum for the villages as well. A few points regarding practical application and then ending the presentation with a few contacts uh, for those who would like to follow up. Here are a few important quotes given by Srila Prabhupada. This town life, industrial life, factory life is a suric, demonic, demoniac life. It is killing human ambition. It is killing civilization. I mean, these are very strong statements. And there are many such statements given by Srila Prabhupada. We just have to hear his lectures or open uh, <coughs> his books. Some of these are in the purports or in letters that he is writing. Another statement, and to save this human civilization, these two classes are required very urgently. So you American boys and girls, and this is very important actually, because very often people from America uh, are thinking that, well, how can we introduce Varnashram in a place like America? <laughs> But here Prabhupada is directly speaking to his disciples who are from America and he expected that we establish uh, these two classes especially uh, of Brahmanas and Kshatriyas. Another important statement uh, leading to the uh, need for Varnashram College. This Varnashram College often quoted by uh, and often heard I'm sure by many by all devotees has to be established immediately. Um, so this remains a standing order, not only in rural areas, but actually in every center that we have all over the world. And unless in the human society the Varnashram system is introduced, no scheme, social order, etc. So Prabhupada was very, very clear and repeated very often the same kind of message. Here is something which I personally feel we need to understand much more uh, and un unless and until we understand this, uh, these two divisions of dharma, we call swadharma. Swadharma means what is the natural, uh, <clears throat> uh, what is natural um, for either individuals or a society. So Prabhupada speaks about the material Swadharma. Uh, on the bodily plane, Swadharma is called Varnashrama Dharma or man's stepping stone for spiritual understanding. Human civilization begins from the stage of Varnashrama Dharma. So this is the material level of Dharma. Hmm. <clears throat> means that Krishna has devised a specific system which he speaks about of course in the Bhagavad Gita <clears throat> and this is meant to be the norm for all of us to live uh, even today and what is the spiritual norm spiritual norm or spiritual level uh, spiritual swadharma is Bhagavad Dharma so real swadharma is spiritual swadharma and what is the occupation of that Swadharma? Jivera Swarupoy Krishna Nityadas. This should uh, <clears throat> be looked at and studied very carefully actually by all devotees. Uh, within ordinary or secular society today, we are totally missing these two actually. We're missing the material Swadharma and we're missing the, the spiritual sadhana. And within our society, we are actually missing 
the materials for dharma. We have uh, activities in relation to the spiritual swadharma, and uh, this will become a little more clear as we uh, make the presentation of the four uh, movements, ISKCON's four movements, which is coming up right now. Srila Prabhupada, in a very important essay written uh, actually in the early 50s, possibly before, but it appeared in the Back to Godhead magazine called Gita Nagari uh, in 1956. <clears throat> he presented something which is actually very crucial, I would say, in terms of understanding these two levels of Swadharma. The first movement he referred to as the Sankirtan movement, referring to the holy name and books. Uh, we won't go into details on this, I'm just covering this very uh, briefly. Second movement, Srila Prabhupada, and these are Prabhupada's own uh, terms, Sankirtan movement, number one, number two, temple worship movement. So these two are in the category of spiritual swadharma, swadharma. And the third one, also in the same category of spiritual swadharma, Prabhupada coined as spiritual initiation movement. Means, uh, <clears throat> congregational development, uh, training, educating uh, individuals, uh, developing different congregational programs so that people can actually become officially members of uh, Krishna's family and, and become initiated. The fourth, Prabhupada coined as classless society movement, which is actually the Varnashram movement. And different from the other three, this is actually referring to material swadharma and that is what I was mentioning a few minutes ago which is missing within our society why is it missing because we don't understand isn't it why we only do things when we have a proper understanding of things uh, the fact that we've not been able to uh, demonstrate and show by example Varnashrama communities or Varnashrama dharma means that we are still lacking understanding of what it actually means or lacking uh, understanding of its importance. And from Back to Godhead magazine 1956, Prabhupada made the following statement, spiritual existence of devotional activities and classless society are two identical terms. The one without the other has no meaning which basically means that we cannot have just the spiritual swadharma. We cannot only have the material swadharma. Both go hand in hand. Both are meant to support one another. <clears throat> and of course this brings us to understanding more easily, more clearly, uh, primary and secondary goals. The primary goal is the spiritual swadharma, naturally of devotional service, whereas the secondary goal is the material swadharma, natural, social, varna, and spiritual, asrama, divisions, localized living within an agrarian-based society with economics focused on natural food production, cow protection, sustainable occupation, and lifestyle. The training and education we impart, and that's why education and the topic of Varnashram College uh, is so important. The training and education we will impart to our children will mold their future lifestyle. Traditional education is therefore needed to maintain, protect, and nourish our traditional culture. And this is something very important regarding agrarian versus urban-based culture. Since maybe 15 years around the world, leaders have been meeting, have been having summit meetings, planning out, projecting how societies, how nations should develop. Uh, <clears throat> Agenda 21, I think some of you may have heard. Agenda 21 is, uh, <clears throat> is referring to the agenda for the 21st 
century, here we are, in the 21st century, what uh, the majority of nations around the world are predicting and projecting, and they are clearly, it is there in black and white in various reports, uh, promoting increased urbanization, uh, a planned uh, system, a planned program to bring people out of the villages so that they can be more easily manipulated and controlled because we should understand uh, village life, localized life, agrarian life is based on a very important concept called self-governance, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> From a lecture given at Gita Nagari Farm in 1976, live village life, simple life, and be satisfied with the bare necessities. There is no need of luxury, and save time and chant Hare Krishna. This is ideal life. And then again, Srila Prabhupada, uh, oh, actually, this is from uh, Gandhi G. There are two schools of thought current in the world. One wants to divide the world into cities and the other into villages. The village civilization and the city, city civilization are totally different things. One depends on machinery and industrialization and the other on handicrafts. <clears throat> Why traditional education is needed? I think we can begin to understand a little bit. <clears throat> traditional education can best teach the full meaning of material swadharma as well as spiritual swadharma. <clears throat> Both these two swadharmas are two standard sciences of sustainable <coughs> natural systems which should never be tampered with, should never be changed. And we have done that in modern day society. We've done that actually, it goes back to the uh, industrial revolution that took place in Europe and that has trickled down uh, <coughs> in different parts of Europe and eventually uh, in America. And it is going full swing. And it has brought us to where we are today in a most unwholesome, precarious, dangerous, uh, and I would say also volatile situation. Srila Prabhupada has given a standing order to introduce the systems of these two educational levels, Gurukula and Varnashrama College which are actually the basis for establishing a Varnashrama culture. So just very briefly, what is Varnashrama education? Varnashrama education refers to the social and educational system of Varna and Ashramas as a self-contained educational institution. I'd like you to stop and try to reflect a little bit on this point. The given social system by Krishna or Varna and Ashrama when in proper place is in itself an educational uh, way of life. Why? Because the vast majority of people or we could say the vast majority of students don't go to school. They learn. Uh, we'll cover this in a few minutes through what is called non-formal education, uh, their particular uh, trade, so that they can uh, meet their various uh, needs within society. <clears throat> That's why, yeah, vast majority of students, Prabhupada spoke about this as well, in that kind of system, don't go to formal school. We'll comment on that a little bit more. What is Varna education? Within Varnasram, there's Varna education and there is Ashrama education. Varna education is based on aptitude-based learning because local Brahmanas are the ones who will determine at a young age the natural tendency or the Varna of an, indi of an individual based on the natural <coughs> aptitudes, one will be directed towards a particular kind of education which will allow him to actually uh, learn 
or have an occupation, which will also be aptitude-based occupation. What is ashram education? Ashram education teaches phased lifelong learning through the four ashramas. From gradual awakening of consciousness to self-realization culminating eventually in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, varna and ashram education are meant to be the norm and standard in society. We'll cover very briefly here, and I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast. Uh, this PowerPoint, as well as other PowerPoints, will be available, I believe, uh, later on to uh, anyone who's interested in having them. Something very important, we have a presentation, a separate presentation on that, so we're just briefly covering here what is called the five pillars of education. There are five basic pillars which are totally absent in modern day education, and that is why Srila Prabhupada was so <coughs> much against modern day education. Uh, number one, definition, which you can just uh, look it up later on in the Bhagavad Gita. Actual definition of education means it covers both what is called the material and spiritual dimension or realities of life. Disposition. Uh, within our Vedic culture, we give great importance for uh, having both qualified teachers and qualified students. Both are actually needed to bring about the desired result. Number three, delivery. How education is meant to be imparted. It should be within a boarding school setting because the teacher and the student are meant to live together, to develop very deep, strong bonds of friendship that will last for the whole life. <clears throat> and education also is meant to be given freely uh, uh, based on the uh, <coughs> qualifications actually of the student. Number four, what sh how education, the content, uh, education design, design of education, curriculum, it should be primarily and again, within our ISKCON society, we are not properly understanding this. It should be taken from our Vedic literatures, from both Shruti and Smriti, which has proper mentions. All of the information that we need for uh, when we agree to actually live within this more natural uh, agrarian lifestyle. And finally, number five, direction. What is the purpose or the goal? And that is given in Bhagavad Gita. The uh, goal ultimately is to uh, serve Krishna, remember Krishna, surrender. <coughs> now something very important as well in the context of education, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> context of education is called the four vidyas of traditional education. And this we find from uh, the Kotilya Arthashastra by Chanaka Pandit. Very interesting and very important as well. For each of these four, there is a particular audience to whom it is directed. The first of the four vidyas, ah, vidyas means actually sciences, these are four sciences, is philosophy. And that is of course for everyone. <clears throat> the four vidyas are actually directed especially to the dvija, the twice born, beginning with brahmanas, who study the science of the Vedas, then the Kshatriyas, who study the science of politics, and then the Vaishyas, who study the science of economics. And just very briefly, uh, covering each of these sciences, what does the science of philosophy entail? <clears throat> the syllabus, primarily the four main books or literatures that Prabhupada has given us, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and Nectar of Devotion, as well as so many other important major books of our Acharyas. And the focus is on three things. Number one is Sankhya, which is uh, the essence of Sank uh, Sankhya philosophy is within uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Yoga, and the essence of yoga, of course, is in the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, Lokayata, which has to do with uh, logic 
uh, and uh, <coughs> Tarka Vidya. Uh, see, something very important. Mm, we know as devotees that the science of Bhagavad Gita is an eternal science. It is Raja Vidya. Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam, the highest knowledge. Because it is the highest knowledge, because it is given by Krishna, therefore it is perfect knowledge. Therefore, there is no need to change. So in a similar way, uh, these different uh, sciences uh, are meant to be uh, uh, introduced and, and, and studied. They are the uh, standard subject matter. Then the science for the brahmanas, it is referring to what is called Chatur Dasa Vidya. Prabhupada refers to this also in the Bhagavad Gita. Fourteen books of knowledge. Fourteen standard, standard books of knowledge. <clears throat> and the focus is on the Vedas, the four Vedas, the Vedangas, that are six in number, uh, Mimamsa, which is actually uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Nyaya, Dharma Shastras, and Puranas. The most important, of course, being Srimad Bhagavatam. And there are, in addition, four Upavedas, uh, Ayurveda, Gandharva Veda, Dhanur Veda, uh, Stapatya Veda. And we can add to this the 64 arts and sciences. This, from this, actually, we can get, especially for the training of Brahmanas, all the necessary knowledge, which they can afterwards impart to others. Number three, the science of politics for the Kshatriyas. So part of the syllabus, this is not complete, is the Kotilya Artashastra, uh, Vidura, uh, Vidura Niti, Dhanur Veda, Chanaka Niti, etc. And the focus is on three things. Number one, protection, Raksha. Number two, administration, Palana. And uh, Yoga Kshema, uh, welfare activities. These are the three main areas that Kshatriyas are meant to uh, look after. So there's a, you know, a very clear distinction between Brahmanas, uh, role of Brahmanas and role of Kshatriyas, and very important for us as a society, especially those who are taking the role of Brahmanas, to understand the position and the importance of bringing in uh, and uh, directing those who will take up the role of Kshatriyas. And the fourth of the sciences is called the science of economics. And <clears throat> that is found in Dharma Shastras, various Dharma Shastras. And the focus is basically, as mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, three areas, Krishi, Goraksha, Vanijam, agriculture, cow protection, trade related to Krishi and Goraksha. The most sustainable, historically, the most sustainable economy has always been actually agriculture. And that's why it is referred to as the most noble profession. And I think it was uh, yesterday, possibly, uh, Bharatchandra Prabhu was giving a quotation, <coughs> giving a reference whereby it is not only <laughs> the Vaishyas who look after cows uh, or do agriculture. Actually, all the members uh, are having land, are living off of the land, are having cows. And uh, in this way, uh, <clears throat> the whole uh, uh, Vedic uh, culture, uh, some of the essential components are for all the members within society. And uh, we're going to speak very briefly here about cities and villages. Uh, this was, uh, there was a research some years back in connection with the centennial, Sri Prabhupada's centennial, 1996. A group of devotees were uh, selected and assigned to look into uh, community development. And out of that research came a book which some of you, I'm sure, have read called uh, Speaking About Varnasana, which was put together by uh, uh, Hare Krishna uh, Dasi. And she wrote this actually in the introduction. Srila Prabhupada explains the role of city temples as staging grounds for organizing Varnashram communities. Uh, that's something we can discuss about more possibly later. 
So what should be the curriculum for cities? Well, a lot of it is actually taking place right now. Uh, how to prepare devotees to preach in the cities? We have, through the IHC, Mayapur Institute, Iskand Lees, various courses ongoing, ongoing that are being given to our devotees. And we need to add some Varnashram-oriented training courses uh, <clears throat> that will, because mostly in number one, mostly that's directed towards Brahmanas, Brahminical culture. We need to add the other uh, Varnas of Kshatriya Bhaisha and Shudra. <clears throat> so not only we should prepare devotees to preach in the cities, but we should also prepare devotees to make the transition from cities to the villages. <clears throat> Therefore, we should introduce curriculum that we will teach in the villages, uh, learning different uh, skills and crafts that are necessary when one lives in the village, uh, inviting devotees from the cities to visit rural projects, etc. <clears throat> How to leave the comfort zone of city life, because uh, very often we get nicely conditioned or not so nicely conditioned and uh, it's, it's a major uh, challenge of course. Villages as living basis. <clears throat> Prabhupada writes as follows, Vrindavan conception is a transcendental village without any botheration of the modern industrial atmosphere. My idea of developing New Vrindavan, so Prabhupada was speaking in the context of New Vrindavan and how, as we know, Prabhupada wanted that we create Vrindavan or New Vrindavan all over the world. <clears throat> Life should be simplified without being hampered by laboring day and night for economic development. <clears throat> and <coughs> Prabhupada also mentions in Los Angeles how Gandhi was trying to get the Indians back to the village. His philosophy was that these capitalists, they are exploiting these poor men. But as soon as Gandhi died, the whole program was changed, industrialization, and attract the poor men and let them live in wretched condition of city life, uh, which is ongoing. What should be the curriculum in the villages? <clears throat> these are the two main Gurukula and Varnasham College, uh, <coughs> which is actually, uh, there are three types of education, or just briefly touching them, formal education, non-formal education, and the third is informal education. Here's briefly the difference. Formal education is actually meant to be for a limited, small percentage of the population because it requires that one have the <coughs> ability to study for many, many years and to study in depth. And generally that is for Brahmanas and Kshatriyas. Whereas the majority of the population, as we mentioned earlier, they will take up non-formal education. They will learn through apprenticeship, through uh, <coughs> different skills, which generally are of a manual nature. And when, when a society when the uh, civilization is built around this concept, then this is a kind of uh, automatic, natural education that takes place. And informal education happens uh, all the time. That is, whatever uh, interaction we have with others or with uh, the media, we learn so many, so many things in a very informal manner. <clears throat> In a Varnashram society, the vast majority of students, therefore, will receive education through non-formal and informal education. That means that most students don't need to attend school. So that's why, you know, we have, we have a completely different uh, understanding, or rather misunderstanding, uh, in present-day modern society. We're getting close to the end of our presentation. Practical application, some things to take into consideration naturally, as Prabhupada often would explain, Desha Kalapatra. We cannot just immediately introduce uh, <clears throat> every city temple. We'll have to see uh, what manpower they have uh, and should discuss uh, 
what can be, in a practical way, uh, introduced in their particular uh, situation. <clears throat> Within our ISKCON leadership, uh, leaders can help by promoting the ideals towards establishing Varnashram culture, working towards a more balanced and harmonized material and spiritual reality. We mentioned a little earlier how we are quite strong in terms of spiritual swadharma, but we are actually very weak in terms of material swadharma. <clears throat> Therefore, we need actually brahmanas. We need brahmanas who will uh, <clears throat> be spending uh, uh, substantial time in learning uh, so many different uh, aspects <clears throat> and then uh, introducing various educational uh, uh, systems, uh, specifically in terms of our national college. And uh, we're closing here with a few contacts. If anyone is interested, <clears throat> you can contact our ministry through our secretariat, uh, Ram Lakshman uh, Prabhu. That's his address, and we have the following website. We also have a major uh, area of the Om Sri Surabhi campaign, which is putting into practice a lot of the aspects that we are speaking about and uh, the devotee in, uh, <coughs> here in India, uh, for Asia actually, is uh, uh, Sri Ram uh, Prabhu, and his address is there. And this is the website that we have as well. I think I've gone over a few minutes. We have another 20 minutes where we can uh, invite <coughs> devotees to uh, give comments, share realizations, uh, put forth questions. I believe we have a yeah microphone as well. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Why do you think we so now who cringe, uh, so, so we should also give them arms training, I think. We have to give them arms training. We have to pay them to, uh, to, 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 to use arms and weapons also, I think. <laughs> Can somebody understand the question? Shall we ask the training in arms? Arms and weapons. Arms and weapons. What are your comments for that? Oh, of course. Prabhupada, if you... <coughs> That's my comment. Uh, Shri Prabhupada very clearly uh, explains in a conversation on the subject matter of Varnashram, and the devotees were a little, a little bit startled. Prabhupada says, yeah, we should train. Chakras will need to learn how to kill. Because that's part of Chakras' duty and responsibility. <coughs> uh, so, this is a whole area actually which we have yet to look into or to put into practice. Uh, <clears throat> there, there are different levels of Chakya responsibility. We were mentioning about uh, protection, of course, defending uh, land is part of protection, defending the bodies, defending temples. Uh, as a matter of fact, when people attacked Mayapur many years back, Prabhupada said, you know, our devotees should have kill all those who attack the deities. You know. uh, <clears throat> so there is injunction and there is a role within society for Kshatriyas. But it has to be done actually under the guidance of qualified Brahmins. Comments, questions? Right. Uh, yes. Uh, for the Varnash College, as uh, you said that you want to train the devotees according to their quality. So for example, some have brown hair quality, some might have shakti quality. So, in the national college, so we need to have a very uh, strong uh, observation of the person, the what qualities that he has, so that he can get the training accordingly. So, how are you thinking to go about that? Your <clears throat> uh, question is how to understand the natural qualities or tendencies of individuals. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, actually, uh, Srila Prabhupada has given guidelines in that respect in that small book, and that's one of the reasons it is so important, uh, Gita Nagari. Prabhupada mentions four ways in which we can determine the varna of an individual, one of them being by 
astrological calculation. Uh, uh, secondly, by uh, observation. Number three, by giving a psychological test. And number four, by knowing and studying the uh, family tradition or the uh, family <coughs> lineage. So there are specific ways, and uh, it's just like in ordinary educational institutions, there's an entrance examination, there are tests which are given. So in a similar way, we need to have qualified brahmanas who will be able to understand and evaluate individuals and accordingly direct them. And of course, your point is well taken. Uh, there should be a close monitoring, uh, monitoring actually. And in that respect, actually, Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur also mentions that it may be that sometimes <coughs> uh, one may decide, let's say, local authorities may decide that uh, such and such varna uh, or person is meant for that varna, but it may be possible to change after observation. Uh, but uh, <coughs> taking guidance from, you know, senior persons, etc. Yes. My question is, um, my question is, how to attract, how to attract young people to our communities? Because I live in one small city, and all the young population they are running to the big cities, and they are leaving our small city where it's very good to develop such farms or communities or peaceful places. How to attract young people yes. to, uh, <coughs> to our communities, right? <clears throat> well, Srila Prabhupada was, uh, is our example uh, because of his uh, clear and strong presentation of the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and by his personal example, <clears throat> he could inspire uh, so many young people actually to join him and to be part of this movement. So in a similar way, uh, individuals or teachers uh, need to be very uh, ideal and very uh, convincing in their presentation of what uh, <clears throat> this whole dimension which is presently lacking within our society uh, and uh, need to uh, show, to demonstrate how Srila Prabhupada very much wanted this. Uh, we can take example actually from even non-devotees, because there is an ongoing and increasing trend today of many people uh, who are not devotees, but who are understanding the need to actually uh, <coughs> uh, live this more natural uh, lifestyle. So by, by personal example, uh, by uh, presenting uh, convincing uh, information and knowledge, and there's more and more accumulating evidence that is demonstrating uh, so many of the points that are made by Srila Prabhupada, how modern industrialized uh, civilization, which is based largely on exploitation, etc., it is uh, <coughs> misleading in so many ways uh, general people. Yes. Some devotees are asking for the mass page so they can note the website. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Any other? Yes. Hi, it's Mark. I want to thank you first of all for such a clear, well-researched presentation. It was uh, very enlightening. Uh, I have a question concerning uh, Gurukula. Uh, you mentioned the uh, need for a very strong bond between the teacher and the student, hence the uh, concept of a boarding school for the young boys. Uh, there is a reference, and I have a references, I have a problem, I have references to the life of spiritual master, uh, in which kind of a child goes, uh, as well as the monarchs, and when a child goes to the Guru he's got, he has the influence of the, of the, uh, of the mother, or the wife of the Guru. Um, is your idea, of your understanding of the Guru to be certainly uh, Our Vedic uh, description of Gurukula, I think, covers 
both. Uh, <coughs> as we have, as we as we develop more this whole dimension, <coughs> excuse me, then uh, we will have uh, a variety of situations, and uh, I. My understanding is not simply limited to, let's say, sannyasis or brahmacharis who are uh, in a kind of an institution, uh, as, as we have known, let's say, within a risk on society. <clears throat> so uh, both will, uh, both will and both should, I feel, uh, be available. And, and uh, actually, Prabhupada explains how, for example, People who learn different skills. For example, if somebody uh, has some interest in learning carpentry, well, he'll go and live in the house of that family, of that uh, person who's a carpenter, and uh, they'll take him in. Uh, so it's not that Gurukul will, all the Gurukuls will have like uh, 50, 100, or so many students. Uh, Gurukul may have just a, a few um, students, or even possibly one. The basic concept is that we go to that place where we can learn something under the proper uh, qualified guidance of uh, a teacher. Uh, it may be in any of the different uh, varnas. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have one comment to make regarding the observing students and identifying their inclination. Mm. So very nice quote in. Uh, Hari Bhakti Das, quoted from Brahman. It says, Brahmana Chatriya Visham, Chudrana Chaparishanam, Sambhasanam Guru Kurya, Jati Chaparishya Vidhi. It says, a spiritual master should carefully examine the nature and activities of his prospective disciples for one full year, who may be a Brahmana Chatriya Vaishya or Sudra Vaishya. So very interesting, uh, traditionally, uh, we see in Chandra Vipanishad and uh, in maybe uh, Kato Vipanishad, there are two scenarios, one is Upamandu and another is Sati Kamandala. These two, uh, we know the story of Gautam Rishi who accepted Sati Kama just by asking him who is your father, you know the story. So even after that, he sent Shakti Kama to one full year to maintain the class. So that was the tradition that uh, the students used to be sent to take care of the house or the Guruji on both. And then they used to observe the Swarupa and Swabhava of the student and then anybody they died. I just wanted to make this. Yeah, yeah. Yes, nice point. Whoops. Nice point. Hare Krishna. <coughs> I lost. Sound, sound is no longer here. Sound is no longer here. <laughs> Who's in charge of sound? I didn't do it. <laughs> yes. important question and we get the uh, I would say understanding especially from uh, hearing from Narada Muni in the seventh canto of Sri Bhagavatam. Seventh canto of Sri Bhagavatam, chapter 11 to 15 is giving specific uh, information regarding education of women. So, one thing important, Sri Prabhupada mentioned in the context of Varnashram College, because the question was asked directly, 
by one of the devotees whether Varnashram College is for both men and women. Prabhupada answered, Varnashram College is for men. It means actually Varnas, the actual Varna education, is something that is for men. Uh, at the same time, uh, women need education, but they have a specific Within, within this context of a Varnashram society, agrarian-based society, where the primary role of women is to actually be ideal <coughs> wives and ideal mothers. So there's a whole education which begins within the home uh, for ladies and it is naturally centered. <coughs> excuse me. It is naturally centered on helping them to become ideal mothers and ideal wives. In some exceptional cases, some ladies may be taking up some particular area, which might be close to what we call varna uh, occupation. But the 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 we could say swadharma of women is clearly established in our Vedic culture and it can only be properly and clearly understood when we live within that, that context. And that is why one of the main reasons, I would say, why in modern day society, even ourselves as devotees, we have such a hard time <laughs> understanding you know, the role of women within society. And that is why also we see uh, a major uh, deviation, a major deviation in modern day society, which is promoted by you know, the whole uh, non-Vedic, non-Dharmic ideology uh, of uh, you know, everyone is the same and we're all equal. We're not all the same, we're not all equal, even among men. <laughs> There are so many differences, uh, <clears throat> and definitely in terms of men and women, there are natural basic differences as well. So there's an education which may take on uh, not only exclusively, let's say, the shape of uh, <clears throat> being in one's home. Uh, there may be groups of ladies who study from other elderly ladies, for example, different arts. Actually, the 64 arts and sciences which uh, many of which are practically lost are especially meant uh, for, uh, for women. So there's a lot of uh, material that needs to be developed actually for teaching uh, our ladies and um, uh, that's a whole uh, a very important area. You know. Yes, I see. Hand up. I have a very quick question. Like I see that when a person of a certain varna uh, is given a task of different varna, like a Brahmana is given a task of a Kshatriya nature, and since he is not used to that uh, varna or that kind of work, he has a lot of frustration. He, and that is the reason that we have a varna concept in varna ashram, that we first help him find his varna, and then he can focus on that particular kind of activities, like a Brahmana. Person with nature, Brahmana nature should get into things which are teaching related for Brahmana training. Similarly, uh, this, is, this is mainly for the boys who are in today. But now, how, uh, how about a wife? Normally, wife is uh, supporting the husband and also helping him sometimes in some activities of his Varna. So, if the husband is of Shudra Varna and wife is a Brahmana, by one authority, and then she has to support the husband sometimes. So the frustration which comes in that whole process. Because I've seen this thing, this kind of thing happening uh, in some families that uh, wife is like a brahmana and husband is like a shudra. So they always have some few balances. So how do you balance them? <laughs> <laughs> we should avoid. Uh, this kind of situation. That, that, that's why, 
you know, training and education. That's why in the Vedic culture, parents spend so much time, you know, years in choosing, selecting a proper partner for their sons or for their daughter. So <clears throat> if we are already in that kind of situation, then we should consult with, with senior Vaishnavas to try and help us how to deal with it. But the ideal is that we should be uh, training, preparing individuals um, so the whole aspect of con uh, you know compatibility, which should be there before one enters into married life, etc., like that. As for your answer, what I understand is that uh, you are suggesting that we have to find a compatible partner as per Varma. How do we find that compatibility? Is there any tool to find that compatibility? Yes, 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 yes. We just mentioned a few minutes ago, actually, maybe you were playing with the microphone or something. Uh, there are four specific ways that Prabhupada explains that uh, can help understand and determine the varna of a particular individual. Uh, and uh, we've, if we follow those guidelines, then we, we can have some, uh, you know, some understanding and, and, and the chances of success will be higher than, than otherwise. So in other words, our, you know, th th there are specific, there's information, there's specific guidelines. We need to have brahmanas who thoroughly understand and then can, uh, you know, disseminate this kind of knowledge, provide various kind of training uh, uh, facilities so that our devotees are best equipped as possible. I think we are close to our time, if, I, yeah, if the clock is right, so I would like to thank everyone. If there's any question, we'll do it later on. Uh, I'll turn the mic over to Bhattacharya Prabhu, our uh, MC. Thank you very much. Jai Sri Prabhu Maharaj Ki.